The next day, my brother said it was nearly the end of the holiday and maybe Horst wouldn't have time to tell us all the Owly Glass stories. So when we went to see Horst, the first thing we asked him was if he'd have time to tell us all the stories. I can only tell you the stories I know, said Horst, but maybe there are some people who know hundreds of other stories about Owly Glass. But will you have to have time to tell us all the stories you know, I said. Oh, I think so, said Horst, but we'll have to hurry up. Good, said my brother. Where's Till going now? Ah, he's off to Hessen to see a kind of prince called a Landgrave. Can you say that? A Landgrave, I said. Good, said Horst, but before he gets there, he gets up to one or two tricks on the way. In one of the inns where he stayed, on the way to Hessen, Till saw a little boy who was ill in bed. He was the landlady's little boy. He was only three. So Till asked the landlady what was the matter with him. Oh dear, said the landlady, he's constipated. He won't sit on the potty and do his business. He hasn't done one for a whole week. If only we could make him go. I think he'd get better. Ah, I know just the thing for him, said Till. Do you? said the landlady. Oh, if you can help my poor little boy, you can have whatever you want. Oh, just leave it to me, landlady, said Till. I'll make him better. So the landlady went out into the garden to cut a cabbage, and while she was out, Till sat on the little boy's potty and did a big one. Then he pulled up his trousers, sat the little boy on the potty and called for the landlady. Landlady, we're ready, he said. The landlady came in, saw a little boy sitting on the potty, took a quick look to see if he had done anything. Oh, he has, she said. But, oh dear. No wonder he wouldn't go, poor little fellow, but you've made him better. Bless you, Mr Owlyglass. What a clever man you are. <laughs> Not really, said Till, pretending to be shy. But how did you do it, said the landlady. How did you make him better? Uh-huh, said Till, tapping the side of his nose. That's a secret, man, but next time I come this way, perhaps I'll tell you. What can I give you in return, then, she asked. That day, Till had money in his pocket, and he was happy enough just to enjoy the joke without taking anything from the landlady. And as it happened, the little boy soon got better. So the landlady never knew she'd been tricked. She always thought it was Till who had cured him. And who knows? Perhaps it was. In this same inn, Till met a merchant who bought butter, cream and milk from farmers, took it to the market to sell. He sold it for more than he paid for it, and that's how he made his living. He was a very greedy and stupid man, and Till got interested in him and told him he'd like to help. Why? What can you do for me? The merchant asked. I have a few ideas about how you could make more money, said Till. Oh, really? said the merchant. How? To start with, said Till, you could buy and sell eggs as well. Hmm, maybe this fellow does know a thing or two, thought the merchant, so he took Till on. The next day they went round the farms buying milk and cream and butter. Till watched the merchant beating the farmers down. I'll give you five shillings for it, the merchant said. But if that's all you give me, said the farmer, I won't have enough to feed my children. Five and no more, the merchant insisted. And so the deal was done. Now Till told the merchant, ask to buy some of his eggs. And so the cart was soon piled high with baskets of butter, churns of milk, cans of cream, and for the first time, nearly a hundred eggs. As Till and the merchant were going down the road, Till said, look master, between each egg, there's a gap, a space. Do you see what I mean? The merchant looked at the eggs in the basket and he saw what Till meant. Each egg was resting on another, but of course they didn't fit close together like bricks because eggs are oval shaped. The merchant said, you're right, son, you're right. There are spaces, quite big spaces. You know what that means, don't you, said Till. What, the merchant asked. If we could squeeze the eggs together, Till said, we'd get more in. Then you could sell more and you'd make more money. The merchant's eyes lit up. But how could I squeeze them together, he asked. Just the same as you do with cabbages, said Till. How's that then, said the merchant. He was beginning to think how lucky he was employing a man like Till who knew so much. What you do with cabbages, said Till, is tread on them to squeeze them up closer. And that way, you get more in the basket. Oh, fine, said the merchant. At the next village, the merchant bought some more eggs from the farmers. Then he stood on top of the baskets and started 
treading on the eggs. Stamp, 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 he went all over them. And of course the eggs broke. There were whites and yolks and shells all over the place and still he went on stamping. All the people of the village were standing around laughing at the merchant. What are you doing? They asked. Why are you stamping on the eggs? Oh, I'm just squeezing them together so I can get more in the basket, he answered. Which just made them laugh all the more. Bit by bit, it dawned on the merchant that he was doing the wrong thing. He stopped what he was doing and looked at his legs, all covered in egg, yellow, up to the knees. Someone's made a fool of me, he thought. The merchant looked for Till, but he was nowhere to be seen. Then one of the people standing there laughing said, Hey, you know who that fellow was? Who was helping you pack more eggs in your basket? No, said the merchant. Till Owley Glass, said the man. Oh, no, said the merchant. Oh, no, if I lay my hands on him, I'll... But it was no good. Till was away, down the road, heading for Hessen and the land grave of Hessen, the man who wanted everyone to think that he was a prince. Oh, can you tell us that one now, I asked. No, tomorrow, said Horst, I've got things to do. What, what, what are you having for lunch today, Horst, my brother said. Oh, um, pork and potatoes, I think, Horst said. Uh, why don't you have scrambled eggs, my brother said. Oh, get along with you two now, he said. And off we went.